Neuroscientist Andrew Huberman talks about the mental benefits of cold showers and how to do them. But where I'd like to start is with mental performance. And I'd like to detail what happens when we deliberately expose ourselves to cold. It's key to point out the word deliberate. If I don't say otherwise, then throughout this episode, if I say cold exposure, I mean deliberate cold exposure. And the reason I point that out is that as my colleague, David Spiegel in the Department of Psychiatry at Stanford says, it's not just about the state that we are in, it's about the state that we are in and whether or not we had anything to do with placing ourselves into that state and whether or not we did that on purpose or not. And what he really means by that statement is that there are important effects of what we call mindset. And the science of mindset tells us that if we are doing something deliberately and we believe that it's going to be good for us, it actually can lead to a different set of physiological effects than if something is happening to us against our will or without our control. Now, this is different than placebo effects. Placebo effects are distinct from mindset effects. So deliberate cold exposure is an opportunity to deliberately stress our body. And yet, because it's deliberate and because we can take certain steps, which I'll describe in a moment, we can learn to maintain mental clarity. We can learn to maintain calm while our body is in a state of stress. And that can be immensely useful when encountering stressors in other parts of life. And that's what we call resilience or grit, our ability to, or mental toughness, our ability to lean into challenge or to tolerate challenge while keeping our heads straight, so to speak. And as you develop the ability to stay in cold temperatures, even progressively colder and colder temperatures for longer and longer periods of time, you will become more resilient. What do I mean by that? Well, my operational definition of resilience is that you are able to resist escape from the stressor, the cold, by virtue of your willpower, which is really your prefrontal cortex, causing top-down control on your reflexes and your limbic system and your hypothalamus, which are basically telling you to get out of that cold water, get out of that cold environment. And in doing so, you are basically getting better at controlling your behavior when your brain and body are flooded with norepinephrine and epinephrine. That's a very reductionist way to explain resilience or grit or mental toughness, but it's a reductionist way of explaining it that is very closely tied to the biology and to the psychology. And it is a fact that norepinephrine and epinephrine release in the brain and body are the generic universal code for stressor. There is no unique chemical signature for different forms of stressors. That is the only one. Okay, so we've been talking about mental effects and the use of deliberate cold exposure for sake of building resilience, which I do believe can be tremendously powerful. Look, it's no coincidence that the screening and the training for Navy SEALs involves a lot of exposure to cold water. One could argue that it is deliberate because they elect to go to BUDS, but when they get into the cold water, at BUDS is dictated by the instructors. And the reason they use cold water exposure as the stressor is that it does offer considerable leeway in terms of duration and temperature in terms of how you can use it as a stressor. Whereas things like heat don't offer much variable space, as we say, there isn't a lot of room beyond which you start injuring or even killing people by using heat. So there are a lot of forms of stressors out there, but cold is one that we can titrate, that we can adjust in ways that can allow us to continually build up and or maintain mental toughness. Now, deliberate cold exposure also has many effects on chemicals other than norepinephrine and epinephrine, most notably the neuromodulator dopamine, which is involved in elevating our mood making us feel energized and enhancing our ability to focus. And that has a lot to do with how dopamine engages us in motivated states, tends to narrow our thinking and our behavior into a particular trench of goal-directed behavior. If you wanna learn more about dopamine, you can learn a lot about dopamine in our episode about dopamine. It's at hubermanlab.com. You can find it. It's a two and a half hour plus um, kind of deep dive into all things dopamine, focus, motivation, et cetera. Deliberate cold exposure has a very powerful effect on the release of dopamine in our brain and body. And this is one of the main reasons why people continue to do deliberate cold exposure. Basically, it makes us feel good and it continues to make us feel good even after we get out of the cold environment. In fact, some people would say 
They don't feel good in the cold environment. It's all stress for them, but afterwards they feel great. One of our previous guests, Dr. Anna Lemke, who's a medical doctor at Stanford University School of Medicine, she's a close colleague of mine, described the use of dopamine in her book, Dopamine Nation, an incredible book about addiction and dopamine, I should mention, and the use of dopamine elicited by cold water exposure by one of her patients. What I'm referring to is the fact that one of her patients helped themselves get and stay sober off drugs by using deliberate cold exposure to increase dopamine. So a healthier form of dopamine release than they were engaged in prior to getting sober. How to effectively do a cold shower. When we talk about deliberate cold exposure, almost always that means getting uncomfortable. And one of the most common questions I get when discussing the use of cold for sake of mental or physical performance, metabolism, etc., is how cold should it be? How cold should the water be? How cold should the environment be? How cold depends on your cold tolerance, your core metabolism, and a number of other features that there is simply no way I could know or have access to. So I would like you to use this rule of thumb. If you are using deliberate cold exposure, the environment that you place yourself into should place your mind into a state of, whoa, I would really like to get out of this environment, but I can stay in safely. Okay, now that might seem a little bit arbitrary, but let's say you were to get into a warm shower and it would feel really, really nice and you were to start turning down the warm and turning up the cold, there would be some threshold at which it would feel uncomfortable to you. And if you were to continue to make a little bit colder than that, you would really want to get out of the shower, but you were confident that you could stay in without risking your health, right? Without risking a heart attack. Now that's very different than jumping into a very, very cold lake if you are trained to do that and you have the right conditions, et cetera, that can be done reasonably safely, but that's certainly not what I would start with. And for many people that would be too cold. And indeed some people can go into cold shock and can die as a consequence of getting to that extremely cold water very quickly. Now that's not to scare you away from deliberate cold exposure. It's just to say that there's no simple prescriptive of how cold to make the environment in order to extract maximum benefit for mental or physical performance.